Kingsman, world's finest tailor. But now we're going into the spy business. Very clever. All right, so uh, let's start, if you wouldn't mind, by talking a bit about how this movie, The King's Man, is different from the previous Kingsman movies. Harris, do you want to give it a go? Sure, uh, might, might butcher it. Um, the film is different. I guess Matthews uh, firmly placed it, um, well, the historical context of the film, you know, having it being set in World War One immediately gives it a slightly weightier tone, but, um, you know, we're also not adhering to any characters. It's the origin of the Kingsman, so um, we get to explore that and explore the history of it with um, with this wonderful ensemble cast and all these mad characters of uh, of that historic period, um, whilst also keeping it um, epic and and fun and entertaining. You know. Well, speaking of epic and fun and entertaining. Uh... There are obviously lots of action scenes in this movie, and that's probably something you've been talking about a lot today, but I would love to know how you prepared for the fight scenes in this movie, and um, if applicable, how they differed from previous fight scenes that you've been involved with. Um, Gemma, do you wanna take that one? Mm. Well, I think um, Matthew Vaughan has this amazing stunt team that he uses um, and has used on the previous Kingsman movies and they've won awards and they're just like the best. And um, for months in advance, before you even start shooting, they're coming up with the choreography and teaching you the choreography. Some of the fight scenes are so elaborate and very, very choreographed. Um, and so, yeah, for months you're, you're practicing certain moves and um, working, we Harris and I both worked with um, this guy Tony, who was like ex-military, who helped us to, you know, learn how to use these rifles properly and move properly with guns. And um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite extensive. I was, I was like, oh right, like it's more than I thought. You know, I, was, I thought I was just going to rock up and do something, but no, that like you have to, you have to train and you have to, you have to work hard at it, and it pays off because in the end, it, it, they do look amazing. Definitely. Harris, do, do you have uh, anything to add about your experience? No, no, just, yeah, we, we, we had the same trainer. It was extensive. Um, yeah, Tony was a legend. Tony Bayless, shout out to Tony. He was, uh, he was shout, out. This is, shout out to you, Tony. He was spe special, uh, ex special forces. So like he used to make you, I mean, he was so nice, but he also used to make you feel like um, every time you wanted to complain about like a little, ache or pain, he'd start telling this sort of story about when he was in a gunfight or when he was like, hadn't slept for six days and you just feel immediately like, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually having a great time doing this. So it's like, yeah, everyone, it just felt really supported by everyone who, who was in that department. Yeah, can't thank them enough really. Did you have a favorite type of combat that you liked learning about and, and participating in in the movie? You know, like the knife skills or sword fights, hand-to-hand -hand combat, which was your favorite? Harris, I mean, you had quite a lot of different stuff to do. Yeah, well, you got to shoot a lot. We got we got to go to the range. Do you remember, Gemma? Did you get to go to the... <laughs> Gemma had a lot of... Sh no? <laughs> I did, I did. I went yeah. to the range and that. That is just was mad, it not... isn't it? Yeah. No, it's just weird because, like, you know, you're you're sort of shooting guns and stuff, and we obviously, you know, in the UK, we don't have guns. And it's it's sort of a weird feeling, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it was um, it was it was cool. I mean, you know, I got to learn how to to gun to, to, to do the gunslinging as well, which was um, I basically became an obsession of mine, like practicing that every place I could, trying to make it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere on set yeah. was always a little. So, <laughs> trying, trying, <laughs> trying. It's New party hard, trick, especially with my <laughs> my little hands. Yeah. So obviously, th this movie takes place in a very specific time period. Do you think there are there any other historical periods that you could see the Kingsmen succeeding in? And what would they be? Yeah, uh, Harris. Uh, well, I think Gemma and I agree on this. We, I think we both like to see, well, I won't speak for Gemma, but I, I'd love to see the, the Kingsman in like the 70s. I think that would be really cool. 
I think it'll be a, a, an interesting um, period of time to explore the genre in, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think Matthew's um, hope is that we do go through the ages with the Kingsmen. So, you know, go through like World War Two and then into like the kind of, you know, the Cold War, the stuff that was happening in the Soviet Union in the 50s and going through, all the way through to present day. There's just like so much, um, so much material and so many events. So, yeah, it's exciting. That'd be very, very cool. Now, is there a historical period that or event that you wish you could have been present for? Gemma? I wish I'd been alive in the 1960s in London. I mean, just that whole time from 1964 to 1968. I'm doing a project at the moment that's set then and I, I just, it was just the most coolest and fun and amazing time. I just, just wish I had lived it. Harris? Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just did a project in like the the uh, the fifties leading into the early sixties. So that that seems like a cool um, a cool time. I, anything before all of this, uh, uh, everything's so centered around technology. I feel like I, I'd love to be able to just uh, escape from that and not be so like tied to devices, you know. So. Mm. I get it. Now that kind of ties into my next question, which was, I know there aren't like gadgets in this movie like there are in the other Kingsman movies, but if you could have had a gadget, not necessarily just from the Kingsman franchise, you know, there are other franchises with gadgets, what would you have thought, what would what gadget would have been really handy for you in this movie, Gemma? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. In this That's movie, funny. I think, yeah, maybe like a kind of something to like, like a, you know, that I get to springboard me, like a rocket, rocket man, like backpack or something, like to just fly off into the distance and save people. Then I would have been able to get up the top of that mountain and, you know, get involved with all that stuff. <laughs> very fair, very fair. <laughs> Harris, you have any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a random question. Gemma. <laughs> Gemma. Uh, you know, I, I always used to be, I was always obsessed with the um, with the invisibility cloak out of Harry Potter, and I feel like my character would probably be, <laughs> would probably would probably benefit from that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> would probably, so would probably benefit. benefit yeah, because he'd be able to just sneak out without without getting played <laughs> by, by That's a good answer. I'm seeing it now. I am so seeing it. Like you putting yeah. on it on and then just, <laughs> just shimmy now. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna end Sorry. with my last question. Um, why do you think that there's such an appeal uh, to the Kingsmen today and that that type of like super spy, suave um, type of agency. Gemma? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, it's aspirational, isn't it? Like, people are obsessed with James Bond. And I think it's, again, aspirational. It's like, you know, this is what, if I was a really cool person, I could be James Bond. I, I could be in the Kingsman. I don't know, there's something, there's the gadgets, the, the, the cars, the, the clothes. Um, and with the Kingsman, I guess you, anyone could. I mean, it's it doesn't matter who you are, you can get drafted into the Kingsman. So um, maybe that's what it is. But um, I think it's this sense of style as well. People just love seeing stylish people, don't they? To look up to and emulate. Well, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>